Do you have narcissistic tendencies? Do you want to be an Instagram fitness influencer for the clout, riches, fame, women, and the appreciation that you deserve? Do you want thousands of people liking your photos, giving you that instant hit of dopamine, making you feel good and validating all of your insecurities? This is how I edit my fitness gym photos for Instagram to make myself look bigger, better, juicier, and to turn the image into something completely average like this, into something pretty solid and nice to look at like this. Whether you're on a PC or a phone, I use an app called Lightroom. On the computer, it's really good, um, but it's also really good on the phone as well. So first thing I'm going to do is crop the image and you basically want to follow a rough rule of thirds grid. So what I've got is this really like mediocre uh, picture of me in a changing room. The quality is pretty bad, but we'll see what we can do with it. We're going to try and get it to go like this, which is what the edit afterwards looked like. So first thing I'm going to do is go into crop and then go into the crop size and we're going to change the crop ratio to four by five. This is the maximum size that Instagram allows portrait in the Instagram feed. So you're going to take up the most space. The image is going to get more seen and then you can use the rule of thirds grid to crop your image. That's the first thing that I do. So what I'm looking to roughly do is put my head in the top third of the body. And then as it's quite zoomed out, it's going to be quite difficult. But then I'm going to kind of fill the rest of my body in the middle and then just like line it up nicely in accordance with this rule of thirds grid. Next thing I'm going to do is sort out the white balance. So you can use this little color picker here. And if you select something white, it will set the white balance based on something white in the image. So it will basically set the white balance in the image to true white. So you want to select something white over here. Like I kind of select different colors just until I get something that looks right. But at the minute, it looks like there's way too much yellows in the shot. That looks like way too much pinks. And that looks like that looks pretty good. So I'd say maybe a little bit, a little bit too much pink in there. Probably go like that. So, so far, if we look at it before, after. It looks a little bit better. It looks a little bit better. The main thing is not to get too caught up in the before image because if we're looking at the before image for a long period of time, it can kind of like our eyes expect it to look that way. So it's don't get caught up in what it looks like before. Next thing I'm going to do is go to light, then go to curves, and I'm going to draw three curves or three points on this curve. The curve of the graph basically looks at the highlights, the shadows, and the midtones. The highlights are these ones all the way at the top. So if you adjust that, it adjusts the highlights in the image. If we adjust the midtones, it adjusts the midtones in the image. And then if we adjust the bottom one, that's going to be the shadows in the image, making everything darker in the shadows. So what we'll do is I want to give it like a little bit of like a nostalgic -y vintage feel. So all I'm going to do on this is grab that bottom corner and bring it up very slightly and so you get that kind of gray look it looks a bit like aged film i'll just drag that up a tiny bit just to give it like a little bit of a nostalgic feel maybe darken my shadows a tiny bit darken my shadows a tiny bit there i just don't want anything to be like jet black um, and i'd say that looks pretty good so far next what i'm going to do is going to go into color then color mixer and i'm going to pull down some yellow tones so look if i remove the yellow tones yellow tones aren't very nice it gets rid of a lot of the, the crap in the background and makes the image look a lot more cleaner i don't want to put them all the way down because then i'm going to start to like interfere with my skin tones so i'll probably just take a little bit off uh, like maybe like minus 20. another hack that you can do is click on the orange tones and then if you grab the luminance drag that down it will actually make you look more tanned so i'll probably drag the luminance down by around 16 um, just to make me look a bit more darker whatever i do with the orange i'll do with the red as well you start to get some like weird pixelated effects and then i also pull greens down as well get rid of any like residual green tones that are sitting in the background that just really cleans the image up nice and easily so before after Next up, what we can do is create a mask. So I'm going to create a mask, select subject, and then I'm going to press this little tool at the bottom left, um, which will invert the mask, that little weird circle looking tool. And then what I'm going to do here is just bring down the saturation. So this is just going to make me pop more. Like I can bring it all the way down. It's black and white. But this will just make me pop more from the background and draw the eye to the subject in the image, which is ultimately what you want to do. What I'm also going to do on that background is bring the clarity down a little bit just to kind of like blur the background a little bit. So I'll probably clarity down to like 26, um, just so it looks a bit softer. In order to get me popping from the background and make it look a bit more natural, what I'm going to do is create a radial gradient. So that's like a circle. And then I'm going to create a circle around me because I'm going to kind of like use that light to make it look like there's like a light beaming down on me just to really, really draw the attention to the subject, which is me. That's the main thing. What I can also do is click on the actual circle itself and reduce the feather a little bit. The feather is just basically how harsh the edges to the mask are. So now what we're going to do is select inverse. I'm probably going to make that a little bit bigger just so it's not covering me. Select invert. So use that. I'll probably make the feather a little bit smaller just so it's not um, not affecting me and then make that a little bit bigger. 
And then what I'm going to do here is bring down the exposure either side of me. So I'll probably bring it down by about one, maybe bring the shadows down a little bit as well. Uh, a little bit like that. And already that looks so much different. So it looks like there's a spotlight beaming down on me. It's really making the subject pop. But I feel like I could do more with my physique. So the next thing I'm going to do now is create a third mask, go to effects, and they've added this tool called texture. Basically just increases the shreddedness of an image, a technical term. So I'm going to zoom in add some texture, maybe like here. Um, this is kind of done like as you please. And that'll just really, really make me pop out of the image more. And then what I'll do as well is get off the mask, go onto the general layer and then go to the effects. And I'm going to add a little bit of grain as well, just to rough it up and just to make the image look a little bit like more nostalgic, look a little bit moody. And I feel that looks pretty good, man. So yeah, super quick, super easy before, after, before, after. So that's how I'd edit that one. Right. So this one we'll do super quick using the same things. We're going to do a crop at four by five. I'm going to use the rule of thirds. So I'm going to put me in the middle. I'm going to basically line myself up in this rule of thirds grid. So my shoulders are probably going to be in that top third boundary crossover. And then I'm going to put my arm against that third side there. I think it looks pretty damn good. Nice and straight. Next thing we'll do is color. So then we're going to set the white balance. Um, use something white there. Uh, it doesn't look really great. What about the drawstring? Can I get that? No, that's gray. Will that do? Um, I think that looks pretty good. Maybe it's a little too much, a little too much blue in there. So I probably, I probably set that like that there. So yeah, that will do for now in terms of the color. Next thing you want to do is obviously way, way, way too dark. So I'm going to add, crank the exposure up. It's taken on DSLR so you can push it a little bit harder. Maybe highlights down a little bit. Um, I'll push the exposure even more on that actually. So I'll probably bring that like right up to there. Bring those highlights down. So see where the skin is looking like a little bit blown out. It's called in the like whites of the skin, like on my hand, for example. See, if I bring them down, it will just bring in some more detail and sort that. So bring the highlights down a little bit just so it looks like it's correctly exposed. And then what I'll do is go into color mixer, um, drag down some of those yellows a tiny bit, drag down some of those oranges. It's going to be quite a hard one because the background is very orangey as well. And then I can also drag down some of those reds, the luminance to make me a little bit more tanned. I might even go minus 17 just to bring some more color to me and then drag down those greens as well. That's already looking pretty good. Like, so that's already looking a lot better. I think you could get a bit more contrast in the way that I look. So you can either just drag the contrast slider up like this, or if you want more control, go into curves, create a three dots here, one in the shadows, one in the midtones, one in the highlights, and then just pull those shadows down very slightly. I think that's looking pretty damn good, to be honest. Then what we can do next is select the subject. Um, invert the mask and I'll probably drag some of the saturation down like this and I'll drag the clarity down as well make it a bit like the background a little bit blurry just so it looks a bit more better playing with the dehaze nah it doesn't look very nice if you want to go for like an ethereal effect you could do that that'd be quite cool and then what I'll do as well is mask off my subject again so create select subject actually leave the mask on the subject this time and then crank up the texture might even add a little bit of clarity on this one. This might be awful, but it's quite hard to see because my phone brightness has gone all the way down, boys. But what you can also do is add in a bit of saturation on the subject. So if you select the subject, up the saturation just on the subject a little bit, it will just make the subject pop that little bit more. And then what I also like to do as well, add a little bit of grain just to make the image look a little bit more gritty, um, which is pretty cool, like this. Before, after, before after before. Now it looks like there's a tiny bit too much going on in those highlights. We can drop those highlights down a little bit further, like pull them all the way down. Don't be afraid if you want to get rid of some of those highlights. Um, and then what we could do, which is kind of a bonus step that doesn't work on all images, but works on some. If you go color, then grading, we can actually add a bit of a color grade to it. So I'm going to select a color in the shadows. That's like a nice blue. So I'm going to drag it to the maximum until I find like a nice tone that I like in the blue. So I'm going to make the shadows teal. So probably like maybe like there, and then I'm going to reduce it so it's just about noticeable like that. And then I'm going to go to the highlights, find an orange that looks good. I'm going to put it on maximally first of all, like really overdo it, probably about there, and then just drag it all the way back until it looks decent. So before, after, before, after. Not too bad image considering the lighting and the white balance in the photo is absolutely horrendous. If we wanted to, we could probably select the subject and uh, drag the highlights down a little bit more um, just to really, really show some more detail. If you're a little bit dark, you can drag the shadows up as well. But just be careful that if you start to like 
bring the highs all the way down, the shadows all the way up like that, it can look a little bit weird and a little bit too fake. But yes, people, that is how I edit pretty much all of my Instagram photos. I'm going through that same process. Obviously, it's going to differ slightly from picture to picture, but that is how I get juicy gym photos.